Hey everybody, I'm Jack Reed with Future Pastimes and I'm one of the designers on Dune Conquest, which is a streamlined version of the classic Dune board game that uses uh, imagery and uh, design aesthetics from the movie. Uh, and it's more of a standalone game than in just a reskinning of the classic Dune game for a number of reasons, which we will get into a little bit in this video. Uh, but it's it's a much faster paced, quicker game to play. Uh, it's for two to four players, which Classic Dune is really for more than that <laughs> to uh, to really shine. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, the similarities and differences between the Imperium faction in Dune Conquest and the Bene Gesserit and Emperor factions from Classic Dune and why there's one faction here, yet two factions there. And that really is driven a lot by that first movie, uh, from Denis Villeneuve. Uh, so Dune, um, part one, uh, had a fairly limited cast of characters. So um, the Emperor is not in that movie. Um, and in fact, there weren't enough Bene Gesserit characters for us to just have a Bene Gesserit faction. So what we did was um, we, we had a very limited supply of characters that we could throw together to even form a fourth faction because Atreides was very easy, Harkonnen was pretty easy, and Fremen were easy enough to put together enough leaders to have full factions. But here with the Imperium, we have a mix of... Uh, we have Reverend Mother of Mohayim. We have a couple of Sardaukar characters. Uh, we have the Herald of Change, and we have an Imperial Courtier. Um, and these are the characters who showed up on Caladan uh, at the behest of the Emperor in order to um, formally have the Trades take over the fiefdom of Arrakis. Um, so what we did is we, we looked at this as um, less of this is the Emperor, uh, but more of the Imperium in general. Uh, it's the Imperium irrespective of who the emperor is or what house is ruling, even though House Carino ruling for a long, long, long time. Um, but if a different emperor were to be put on the throne, these these elements of the Imperium would continue uh, as they are. So that's kind of the reasoning behind that. And we know that the second movie is coming out. We know that Christopher Walken is playing the emperor. He will be in it. We know that there are other Im imperial characters from House Carino and their court in there. So that has the makings of its own faction. It certainly wouldn't be uh, a redo of the Imperium faction, more of a House Carino thing, but we'll see how that goes. So let's talk about what this faction does and how it compares to the other two factions. So with the Imperium faction, you have your 20, 20 leaders. They all start off the planet in their reserves. You start with, with 18 spice, which is the most spice out of any of the factions that they start with. Free Revival is two forces, um, and they have two faction advantages. One is called Market. Now, the the decks in Dune Conquest are divided into a battle deck, which players get four of those for free, or they fill their hand up with four uh, every game cards phase. And then there's a second deck of Market cards, which players can buy for two spice each, up to a hand of three. So whenever another faction buys market cards, they pay the Imperium. Those two spice for each of those cards. And the Imperium uh, pays the bank. The other ability that they have is the voice, the Bene Gesserit voice. This uh, version of the voice is going to be different from Classic Doom, which we'll cover here in a minute. Um, so whenever you're in a battle, you may use the voice to tell your opponent that they must or must not play one type of weapon, um, projectile, poison, or special. And there are a few special weapons in the deck, um, the battle deck. Uh, so the, that player must comply if possible, and if they don't have that particular type of card, they can do as they wish. Um, so yeah, it, uh, you don't have to name specific cards. You don't have to say you must or may not play the laser gun. You're just saying the category of special weapons, and that covers all special weapons. So like the slow dart uh, or the Harkonnen blade is also considered a special weapon in Dune Conquest. So let's compare that with um, the classic factions. So in, in basic classic Dune, the Emperor gets paid for 
cards that other factions buy in the bidding round. So they're bidding on cards. They're going to be spending uh, a lot of the times more than two spice, and that's for any treachery card. Uh, but that's going to go. So this is a, a very comparable thing. Uh, the Imperium is uh, is going to be getting that income. Uh, in Advanced Dune, you also have the Sardaukar, but there's no Sardaukar tokens in Dune Conquest, so they don't um, they don't have any special combat abilities with the forces themselves. But the voice is a pretty potent ability, even if it only affects weapons, as it does in Dune Conquest. Now, speaking of which, the Bene Gesserit, uh, it's uh, quite a bit different. They've got a whole thing where they're only starting with one force on the board, and when other forces, uh, factions ship, they can send a force along to the Polar Sink. Uh, and Advanced Dune, they can actually send that force to wherever the other players are shipping uh, as a spiritual advisor. There's none of the spiritual advisor stuff in Dune Conquest. The only thing you're getting from the Bene Gesserit faction sheet here is the voice. And the voice in Classic Dune is um, it's a little bit uh, more broad. Um, you can affect weapons or defenses. You can also uh, voice worthless cards or cheap heroes. So it's... Uh, it's got a lot, but in terms of the special weapons, you have to name them specifically, unless they also happen to have a an attribute that falls into the general category of projectile and poison. So poison blade, um, which counts as a poison blade, and a poison weapon, and a projectile weapon, uh, would be would count if the if the Bene Gesserit say you must play a poison weapon or you may not play a projectile weapon. Poison blade is covered. Um, the poison tooth is covered uh, in terms of affecting a poison weapon. Same thing with like chemistry and weirding way. Um, since weirding way counts as a projectile weapon, uh, unless played with another weapon, um, that could be uh, counted. So if you say you must play a projectile weapon, if, um, if that's the only card that they have, they would have to play it because it would count as that. Um, so um, that's how they, how they compare. Again, this is a much more streamlined. It's taking the, the simplest elements from Classic Dune and combining them here with one faction. Um, and then the, the rest of their gameplay is the same as the other, um, you know, the same as the Atreides and Harkin, and you have to ship to get on the planet. You don't start on the planet. Um, two free revival, uh, and um, your forces are just normal forces. So um, the, the Imperium faction is a faction that, uh, is one of the best suited to getting the economic victory. So at the end of five turns, and that's all Dune Conquest is, is five turns long. Uh, you can't win on turn one or two. So three, four, or five, you can win through a stronghold victory, three strongholds. Uh, but if at the end of turn five, nobody has three strongholds, then you are going to give the win to the faction with the most spice. And any strongholds you occupy will count some spice towards that total. But um, because the Imperium has that income, they are uh, in the base game here. They're the only economy faction, so they're getting that spice. If other factions are buying market cards, and it's hard not to because there's some really good effects in there, um, they're going to have that income. And if they're going after spice blows as well or getting into battles and killing uh, leaders, uh, they're going to get that income as well. So that's why the Imperium... Um, they, if they win, um, most of the time they're winning through the economic victory. So when you're playing against them, you have to take that into account. There's no economic victory in Classic Dune. You, um, you got to go for it, uh, of course. And, and if the guild is in the game and nobody wins, they win. Fremen have their own kind of sketchy version of that, but yeah, that is what it is. So it's a, it's an interesting, um, I think an interesting conglomeration of those effects from these two factions if we you know if we'd had a few more characters if we'd had a few more Bene Gesserit characters if you know Reverend Mother Romalo or um possibly uh Lady Fenring had been in the first movie we I think we very much would have had the Imperium faction just be a Bene Gesserit faction and those would have been your four factions Traides, Harkin, and Fremen and and Bene Gesserit. Um, but again, we were stuck with what we what we could. And in fact, we didn't even have full access to everybody who was going to be in the movie before the movie came out. Uh, we had some access to stuff that other people, uh, you know, the public at large didn't have. But um, a lot of the minor characters that, uh, for instance, the Bene Gesserit that is 
in that same scene with the Herald of Change, she's there and uh, she's melting her Bene Gesserit candle so that the uh, Duke can press his signet ring into the wax. Um, we didn't know of anything about her. Um, you know, she just could have been Bene Gesserit's sister. Um, she didn't really have a name, but, um, it was a, it was a face that could have been on a leader disc. Um, you know, this guy here, almost certainly a guild rep. Um, so <laughs> that's also kind of a weird twist of fate. Um, if, if in a, an expansion to this game, if we want to do a spacing guild, um, faction, it'll be interesting to see if we can have enough characters uh, to throw together to do that. But uh, that remains to be seen. Here's where we are today with this one. Let me know what you think of the Imperium faction. It is one of the most powerful factions for sure in Dune Conquest, um, although I played today and did not win um, with the Imperium. So uh, it's, uh, it's not always, uh, you know, it's not always fun and games for the Imperium. They do certain things don't go their way. Uh, they're not going to win. Um, they didn't even have the most spice either. So it was a, is a military victory for another faction. Um, but you know, that's how the spice cookie crumbles. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you again soon.